This is the eighth in a series of short podcasts designed for the families of children with chromosome 18 abnormalities. In this podcast, we will discuss the potential types of treatments that we envision for children with chromosome 18 abnormalities. What do we think could be done for people with chromosome abnormalities? We recognize that you cannot replace the missing chromosome or take out the extra chromosome, but you can devise treatments to counteract the effects of the chromosome abnormality, especially if you know the genes involved. This seems so simple and straightforward, yet no one has done it for the chromosome 18 abnormalities. When we talk about treatments, we intend the term to be used very broadly in the mechanisms used to achieve the goal. What we fundamentally need to do is to change gene expression. We need to upregulate some genes and make one gene do the work of two for the deletion conditions. And we need to make three or four genes pull back and reduce their output to the normal level for the duplication conditions. There are many known ways to change gene expression. This is not a new concept. We actually each have the ability to change our gene expression through diet. One example is the alcohol dehydrogenases. As many of you have learned, if you rarely uh, have a drink of alcohol, you quite easily begin to feel the effects. In contrast, if you drink the same amount of alcohol every day for two or three weeks, you no longer feel the effects of a single glass of alcohol. This is because of a very simple mechanism of increasing the production of the key proteins called alcohol dehydrogenases that break down and metabolize. There are many known ways to change gene expression. This is not a new concept. We actually each have the ability to change our gene expression through diet. One example is the alcohol dehydrogenases. As many of you have learned, if you rarely uh, have a drink of alcohol, you quite easily begin to feel the effects. In contrast, if you drink the same amount of alcohol every day for two or three weeks, you no longer feel the effects of a single glass of alcohol. This is because of a very simple mechanism of increasing the production of the key proteins called alcohol dehydrogenases that break down and metabolize alcohol. This is also done, um, sorry, there are also drugs that we know that can affect the production of key proteins. For example, some of the adults who are hearing this may in fact be on a medication called a statin. A statin is a medication that is used to treat certain disorders of lipid metabolism. Statins very specifically increase the expression of important proteins that help the body get rid of this undesirable fat. There are also experiential forms of treatment that have benefit. For example, the early use of hearing aids in children that have hearing impediments have substantial long-term cognitive benefit. There are also targeted means of improving outcomes. For example, there are computer programs such as Fast Forward, which have been shown to be beneficial in individuals with auditory processing disorders. While these treatments are not necessarily specific for children that have 18Q or 18P deletions, there is no reason to believe that they would not be beneficial in children that have these conditions. We see parallel roads that together will get us to the answers that we seek. First is the clinical description. The clinical description provides a variety of useful information. First, it allows us to understand what the deficits are. Secondly, it helps us to identify what are some potential productive roads of treatment or of intervention. In addition, when the children are followed for prolonged periods of time, we begin to understand the natural history. That is, we learn what happens when this two-year-old becomes an eight-year-old or an 18-year-old. As a clinician, the most common question that we're asked when we first meet the family of a child that has a chromosomal abnormality is, 
the normal life questions. Will my child grow up to be healthy? Will my child be able to graduate from high school? Will my child be able to have a family? And we only learn the answers to those questions by following children for a long period of time. The second aspect of getting answers is the molecular assessment. That is the information that we've discussed in the previous podcast. This assessment allows us to obtain a very well-defined understanding of where the actual genetic defect is. Over time, that will help us understand what are the likely consequences of a particular genetic defect. And finally, by correlating the clinical features and the molecular features, we will be able to identify which genes are most important, that critical 8 or 10 genes that are responsible for the majority of the phenotypic features. And once we know those genes, we can begin to identify what uh, are the treatments that could conceivably be beneficial. We then could identify medications or other forms of intervention, as we talked about earlier, such as hearing aids, that might have benefit for a particular child. So we've begun a journey together. We thank all of the many families that have already participated in our research activities, and we look forward to continuing this work as we learn more and more about this amazing group of children, and we get closer and closer to finding treatments that actually are effective for the affected individuals.